My streaming PC was great. Until it wasn't. This was becoming a more frequent occurrence. And nobody likes a blue screen midstream. So it was time for an upgrade. But what's inside it? Well, let's reverse and find out. It's worth mentioning that I had a lot of help with this build, so a big thank you to Intel ANZ, ASRock, and Thermaltake Australia for helping select and provide most of the parts in this amazing build. So first up is this, Intel's newest gen i5 13600K processor. Now the processor is basically just the brains of your computer. It's telling everything what it needs to be doing and how fast it needs to be doing it. My old computer was a few years old, so it was running a little bit behind. So being able to jump to Intel's newest gen, like 13th gen, the performance jump is very noticeable. And I'm able to run everything I need as a creator OBS, all of my background applications, uh, any game that I want, everything just runs smoothly and that leads for less technical issues which means I can spend more time creating and making stuff which is just like super great so good processor. Now your processor needs to be put into something and that's where a motherboard comes in. We're going to be using the ASRock Z790 PG motherboard, but it's a Sonic the Hedgehog edition. What's that mean? It's the same as a normal Z790 motherboard, it's just got a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog branding on it. And like while we're talking about the Sonic the Hedgehog branding, uh, it's not too overstated to be honest. It's done very tastefully, I like the little blue highlights. The back of the board especially, like I wish you could get to see more of that in the build. It's, it's a very just nice looking motherboard which I, I didn't think I would say with like a Sonic the Hedgehog piece, but it's really cool looking. And like, given that we're moving over to Team Blue, I think this kind of makes sense to really embrace Sonic the Hedgehog as well. <laughs> but it's got everything you'd need out of a motherboard. Lots of USB ports, lots of M.2 slots. Most importantly, allows us to really benefit from Intel's 13th gen processors. All of this needs to be put inside something and I've chosen to go with the Thermaltake Series 300 case. We even got a little LCD panel for the outside of the case, which is pretty cool. Admittedly, this case was a little wider than I was expecting, but that ended up working out in our benefit because it just has so much airflow going through it. I don't think I ever need to worry about overheating issues. This thing's gonna get so much fresh air just pumped through it all the time that yeah, overheating is just not an issue anymore. I made the decision of live streaming my build which ended up working in my favor because Thermaltake Australia was in the chat there to answer any of my questions that I may have run into. And I ran into a few just because I've never built a PC before. I started off by putting the CPU into the motherboard and I've got to say that is probably the scariest part because you have to put an uncomfortable amount of pressure onto this little handle to get everything situated into place. That's nothing against the motherboard, that's just how you put CPUs in and it scares me. We then installed some DDR5 Thermaltake RAM and this thing looks really cool, I'm really impressed with this. But installation was super easy because everything is just clearly labelled on the motherboard and also I was reading the instruction manual like it would save my life. Next up with installing the M.2 drive. This is where using an IKEA toolset probably isn't your best bet. You want a screwdriver that has a little magnetic tip on the end of it because all these screws are very tiny and they will fall off and you will lose track of them otherwise. And uh, yeah, that was that, that was my big issue. I kept losing some of the screws and then would be searching all over the floor for them. Then it was time to screw in the motherboard to the case and connect all the pins and fan headers and everything where it needed to go and attach the Tough Power GF a3 850 watt power supply from Thermaltake. All that took me roughly three hours. I was also streaming and trying to entertain people and really trying to make sure I didn't mess anything up. The rest of it though would have to be done off stream because I was taking a couple of components from my old computer, namely the RTX 3080, the Thermaltake AIO cooler and the Elgato Camlink Pro. 
once I got everything installed, it was time to boot it up. And oh my God, I cannot tell you the relief when all the lights came on, things started spinning, everything started working and it just worked. I was so relieved. At the end of the day, I was left with a computer that could handle anything I needed as a content creator. It could run any game I wanted. It could stream it flawlessly. I'm so incredibly happy with how it's running. You'll be able to find a product list of all of the items included in this build in the description below. And another big thank you to Intel ANZ, ASRock and Thermal Take Australia for really helping me out with this build. I really do appreciate it, so thank you. But please let me know what you think of the build down in the comments below and if you'd like to see something like a setup tour and we can you know, maybe do that. All right, see ya.